It's difficult nowadays to surprise the residents of a big city with unique design and architecture. Bizarre shapes, unusual materials and colors are replaced in the dull monotony of typical buildings. Any fashion is changeable, but any fantasy can become real if the right justification for it is found. Some 30 or 40 years ago, there was another picture with Kyiv city development. Then outskirt residential areas and typical public buildings were massively erected. Subway stations were also built under standard projects. Exceptions to the rules were very rare. Out of all the old stations, I liked Libitska the most, because it was unique. It brought together all the trends that were unique in the Soviet Union at the time. I had never seen such solutions. I mean, a piling or a partition between two tunnels. A decision was made to remove the middle and just leave the rings. The station itself allowed this, because it was not deep and the pressure was not great. And all of this could be done. The Kyiv subway station Libitska, initially known as Dzerzhinska, received its first passengers on the eve of the new year of 1985. On December 30th, it is interesting that initially its construction was not planned on the Blue Line. It was planned to open Avtovokzalna station, where Demivska is currently located, after Krasnoarmiska, Palaz Ukraina station now. But this didn't prevent Libitska from becoming one of the most unique and expressive stations in Kyiv. Дело в том, что пилоны станции были раскрыты еще и внутрь, и получились такие вот проходы. The fact is that the station's pylons were also opened inside, and this provided passages between the rings of neighboring halls. And this made this station unique and extraordinary. Unique not only in Kyiv and Ukraine, but even in post-Soviet areas, as even Moscow did not have counterparts of this station. This was achieved here using new technology developed in Kyiv that enabled to narrow it down to one piece of tubing or ring about 75 centimeters in width, without marble and decoration. This meant we got ultra narrow pylons. It's thanks to this that the station looks lighter than any other pylon stations in Kyiv, and certainly more expressive. It was named Libitska in 1993, after the Libit River that runs through this area. By its design, it is a three-volt deep laid pylon station. By the way, then Kyiv chief architect Valentin Yezhov had an active role in designing it. Even several sketches showing the changes in station designs at different stages of construction remain. Like many Soviet stations, Libitska had its own artifact, which was removed in the early 1990s. At the entrance to the cash desk, there was a bas-relief of all-powerful Bolshevik Felix Dzerzhinsky. The area above Libitska station was for a long time also called Dzerzhinsky Square. It was a common practice in the former USSR to name settlements, streets, squares, enterprises and even children's institutions after those who'd fought for Soviet power. The subway was no exception. It was always regarded an object of strategic importance. I'd like to focus on another point that was considered from the very start of construction. It was construction of special structures for the Republic's top leaders. Back in the mid-1940s, when the Kyiv subway project was being considered, Soviet Interior Minister Timofey Strokach wrote a letter to the Central Committee Politburo offering to build special structures for the country's leaders. Object number one was built near Lipke and was intended as the command post for the country's leaders. The document containing detailed descriptions of leaders' offices during the handing over of this facility from the Metro Boot Enterprise to the subway's fixed assets has been preserved. Office number one belonged to the first secretary of the Communist Party of Ukraine, Shelest, and other offices were intended for MPs, central committee secretaries and department heads. There was also a food pantry and first aid room. 
Кабинет номер один, первый секретарь Компартии Украины Шелест, кабинеты остальные, замы, секретари ЦК, начальники отделов ЦК. Кроме этого, там был предусмотрен склад продуктов, медпункт. This life behind the scenes of the Soviet state was known only to the elite, and bomb shelters and other special-purpose underground facilities were built in all main Soviet cities near subway lines. Of course, in heightened secrecy, any disclosure of information about work, even to family members, could cost workers their job and even freedom for many years. I had я не имела права выехать никуда за пределы Советского Союза, ни в одну страну. I had access, and this prohibited me from going anywhere beyond the Soviet Union, because I knew a great deal of secret information which could not be disclosed. It was taboo, and for this reason we had no right to say a word. Табу, мы не имели права произнести ни слова по этой причине. On the Palaz Ukraina Libitska section, the subway line makes a sharp turn under Veliko Vasilkivska Street. Close to this turn, there is one such special purpose underground facility. Finding themselves in a comfortable subway car, passengers aren't even aware of this neighborhood. In the meantime, perhaps here, right behind the tunnel wall, underneath the busy streets of Kyiv, another secret city lives its own life. Of course, unlike Moscow, Kyiv was not a city of super-strategic importance, and there were no secret subway lines, but something was built here. Still, it was the third subway in the Soviet Union. About a dozen special-purpose facilities were built here, and most of them have successfully existed to this day. One facility is the so-called command post of the Kyiv subway, although this information is unreliable and no one can confirm its intended function. It is located underneath Horodetsky street. This is unfinished bunker. Its main tube or unit is about 12 meters in diameter, and auxiliary structures adjoin it on each side, but the largest unfinished object object is located close to Palazzo Ukraina station, the so-called underground city. It is called so because it is, in fact, the largest non-transport complex in Kyiv that is connected to the subway. Eyewitnesses talk of a large tunnel with an extensive system of auxiliary facilities. It is about 20 meters deep and not far from the subway line. This special facility, unfinished from Soviet times, is currently served by the subway. It is invisible on the surface, as it is among urban high-rise buildings. There was a trolleybus depot here initially. During its construction, they put a barely visible mine in the territory of the depot and began to build this tunnel. They did not complete it. A huge bunker was planned primarily for the government and party members. There were several government quarters built back in the 1970s and 1980s. They included Barbus and Lumumba streets. It was between the Palazzo Koina and Libitska stations. Government members could hide in the event of danger. The existence of underground special purpose facilities in Kyiv still remains a secret. After the USSR collapsed, some documents were declassified. They are studied by historians and researchers of the Soviet past. It turns out that our usual everyday subway still keeps lots of secrets and mysteries. Это были просто какие-то выработки, которые расположены были недалеко от метро и there were some mines close to the subway, and small pedestrian tunnels connected them to subway lines, and vertical mines with elevators connected them with the surface. The fact is that this part remained classified. I discovered in party documents that in 1954 the construction of the Kyiv subway was frozen, but the part with special facilities intended for the country's leaders continued to be built. A few years later, party documents highlighted information about the death of an elevator worker. 
отложилась информация о том, что сорвался лифт и погиб лифтер. But while historians study documents and archives, then illegal researchers or diggers prefer to live on the edge. Even in complete darkness, they post amateur videos with grim shots of urban abandoned houses, underground utilities, old mines and tunnels, former bomb shelters and also special purpose facilities. Often entering in conflict with the law and risking their own health and even lives. I remember how being one inch from disaster, people fell onto the contact rail, clinging to the sleepers and pierced the shabby casing from Soviet times, which crumbled into dust. They fell and their knees froze on these fragments of the contact rail, just a few microns from the deadly current. I have been involved there recently. Anyway, in those days we tried to drip feed bits of information to avoid it leaking out beyond our circle. Even posting some photo with the tunnel on social networks was taboo. Не пускать ее за пределы нашего круга. Даже банально выложить какую-то фотографию в социальных сетях. Today bloggers film the subway and those parts of it that are still secret. The film canals in detail how they get into facilities. For example, according to new amendments to the Russian criminal code, access to secret facilities can be punishable by imprisonment. Уголовный кодекс за вот эти вот объекты, которые являются секретными, уже можно попасть в тюрьму. The subway is in no hurry to disclose all its secrets. And this generates all kinds of myths and conjecture, and attracting those who want to get into it by avoiding the cash desk and turnstiles. Secret underground objects from Soviet times have a different fate, and there is also experience of their use in peacetime. I know for sure that in Moscow there are many such special purpose facilities, including Subway 2, which no one has ever seen, but they exist. And there are a number of objects closed earlier, or mothballed, or not used for a long time, and some of them were discovered and even ended up into private hands. They were turned into theme facilities to which everyone has access. The subway is a mode of transport that is important and necessary for big cities. First and foremost, it is a real engineering feat, whose main purpose is to transport passengers. Kyiv's Libitska station was born under its own motto, we will build our new world. Its authors took the Soviet motto as a basis and expressed it in decorative stars at the end of the central hall. The composition included four small stars and a large one, which symbolized unification in a large state. The same idea was present on the minted panels of tunnel walls, lined with pink marble from far off Cuba. As for the floor, marble stripes around the granite perimeter of the hall formed a clear pattern, as though directing flows of people from train cars to the escalator and exit. The station received the status of a newly discovered object of cultural heritage in 2011 for its lightness and original design. It still has them, it receives passengers from morning till late evening, and at night subway trains sleep here, just like at home. They stand in the tunnels. Some of the trains are at the station itself. In other words, cars have their replacement plan. And every night, after closing subway for passengers, these trains are put in a certain order. And in the morning, according to a certain schedule, each driver picks up his train, inspecting it before departing, and takes the train onto the line. Libitska served as the final station of the Kiev subway for 26 years. Today it continues to be auxiliary, giving shelters to cars at night and opening doors to passengers in a hurry in the morning. Those passengers who have managed to solve its secret still don't understand where reality ends and the parallel world begins, the world of the subway. The doors are closing. Next station is 